So Altinda Fabrizio was asking in his VR about a setup of the homestead and like um, where to place animals and how you lay it out. And that's really a tricky question because it kind of depends. And I would say uh, out there, if you're going to be out there in uh, the Illinois area, somewhere like that, where it's definitely much greener, you're going to be able to do a lot more with a lot less than us. So just take that into consideration when I'm talking about this. But uh, um, we've kind of started designing it where everything kind of circles around the, uh, the garden. So you can take the animal compost and use it. But I'd definitely say whatever plot you're looking at is double your garden size uh, for what you think you're going to use. That way you can rotate the uh, rotate your crops. Even if you just move it a, a, a different row each year, and you have a winter crop on half, and uh, then you rotate just to keep uh, the nutrients in the soil. You have to look up a lot of the details about what plants need to be rotated like that into onto whatever else and what needs to what is what's good to follow on like if you have a row of corn what's good to plant in that row of corn the next year or whatnot um but definitely consider that that uh you double that area if possible so that you can maximize because really whatever area you designated for the garden is kind of going to be like half if you're looking for long-term sustainability where you don't have to use fertilizer and stuff other than animal compost uh using you know that's what we're, that's what we use so when you think about layout having the animals located around that in a way that um, makes it easier to compost the material plus as we uh, break this garden down in the fall we can let the animals in or we can like for the pigs in particular uh, throw them uh, remains of different plants over to them or you know give them to that so uh, we have it, you know, set it up to, you can set it up to where there's like gates into each of those areas or whatever you think you need to do um, to, to accomplish that. And while we're down here with the chickens, uh, speaking of setup, um, so setting these guys up, if you're going to have any other small animals, you can let the chickens run underneath their pens like rabbits to compost that material. So they'll run under any type of small animal that you can put in the same pen with them or in caged area that way they clean up a lot of the mess and they help keep your fly population down and everything else so you can use chickens in conjunction with anything like that uh, like we showed the chicken pig a while back the chicken pig helped keep that uh, pig pen in order but uh, it wasn't the way we had it set up but they do things like that uh, keeping your other animals uh, compost down and recomposting and also while uh, keeping bug populations down so the thing to think about with your chickens is who you can pin who you can enclose them with to accomplish that is a consideration to take as well so as the pigs run away from me as I'm trying to get them uh, eaten on camera they don't like me at all um, <laughs> but uh also, your animal security, you know, pigs, you can't let them run loose depending on the breed you get. I mean, the big Herefords, you probably don't want roaming your whole property. Uh, these guys, depending on the type of pig you get, these are a uh, grazing pig, the Cooney Coonies. So they, we could, you know, let them graze certain times of the year, like when we turn over the garden and stuff like that. They can help churn that up and uh, graze it while we're uh, um, eating it or uh, <laughs> turning it over <laughs> you know on track here but uh yeah the type of animal you get definitely take into consideration what they can what their needs are but primary of course is security and uh you know we've got the pigs in enclosures here elbow armpit high but that's not their primary security obviously our perimeter fencing is the biggest thing because you want to have that you know security is paramount uh with the coyotes and everything, I mean, coyotes can technically get over our perimeter fence if they really, really wanted to. It's a more of a deterrent. I mean, the coyotes up here are smaller. A lot of people need to worry about, you know, mountain lions and other things, depending on where they're located. Uh, it, it has happened in our area, but it's very rare, uh, considering our location. But uh, it, that the mountain lions, like, there's no 
we don't we got dogs and uh, that's our early warning primarily uh, if we had something like that come in the area but think about your predators and how you can enclose those guys to uh where did they run off to what did you guys argue with? see they hate me that bad they got food right here see that whoa, whoa, whoa. where's that they got food right here and they run way over there stay far away from me so much they don't like me what's up with that haters but so we have our enclosures and really um we the, for the enclosure of the pig this could be a lot shorter uh we can go even shorter on our fencing for them because these guys aren't gonna uh, climb over but uh it's primarily to keep other animals out keep the goats out of the keep the goats out of the pig pen so they can have peace <laughs> it's another consideration is uh having your separation pins at a certain height that uh, keeps the other animals out of each other's business. You know, the pigs like to root under, goats like to go over the top. Sometimes the goats will go under too. But having everything staked down in a way took us a, it's a learning curve to understand just what they're capable of. Uh, so depending on the size of your animal and whatnot makes a uh, big difference with that. These guys aren't quite as skittish, I don't think. But also in your considerations, um, you know, separating by sex, you're going to need to have enough pins if you're doing any breeding to keep them separated when you want them separated and keep them pinned in when you want them to keep them pinned in. Um, just depending on what uh, what you're looking your needs are, if you're just going to have one milk goat, obviously that's not as big a deal. But when you got multiple animals, multiple sexes, you know, how far... You know, nature will take its course one way or the other. So if you want to uh, have lots of animals, you don't have to worry about it so much. But uh, at a certain point you're, before you call, you're going to want to have a separation pin as well, especially for males. If you don't uh, gild them or anything, um, getting the males away to keep their hormones down before you butcher them is a good good thing. I don't, that's with any animal. If you don't gild them, uh, you can have that uh, set up. Right, Mama? Then you have to get these guys separated for weaning. These guys, to the biggest of our attempts, have been able to escape enclosures. It's a slow process. I'm just hoping they get fat enough to where when I get them out, they can't get... And I put them in another pen, they can't get out of that pen. These guys are escape artists, aren't you? Aren't you escape artists? Yes, they're escape artists. It's a work in progress. So there's challenges. So that was a good question by Altenda, uh, and I've been trying to get around to all the questions for the VRs uh, from the giveaway because, uh, hey, it's customer satisfaction, right? And it's things that I have to think through and haven't really talked about much in a lot of respects. Uh, but as far as layout, that's kind of the way you lay out and think about what you're going to, just getting your planning ahead as far as you can is good. Um, we've kind of done a little bit on the fly. We have a little bit of space to do that as well. I mean, uh, if you're only going to be on an acre and a half, two acres, something like that, it's going to be imperative you plan a little bit further ahead. Uh, five acres is a little bit more roomy to where you can make a mistake or two and then just plop something else down right next to it or you know, move around. Uh, it gets really cramped on you know, a couple acre lot. Uh, if I was, uh, like I said, this garden is about a quarter acre, a little bit less than a quarter acre, but anyway... Uh, you know, your garden space alone. You know, out there, you guys could get all the way with a lot less and get a lot more productivity probably. But again, that rotation and being able to rest the soil or rest crops, winter crop, winter cover, all that things are rotation. I would try to, uh, whatever you think your size of your garden more, I would double it. That's just me thinking now. Because um, your animals you can pin up and depending on if you want to, if you have the property to let them graze, that's fine. But if you're going to have pens for everybody, it's probably better to have a little bit bigger garden than the mansions these guys live in. Don't you guys live in a mansion? Huh? You like your mansion? Yeah. Sure they don't. They don't. They're not appreciative. They don't know. They don't know at all. Right, guys? All right. So.
So yeah, good question about Tenda there, and that's just my, you know, still beginning level understanding. I would just think of it as security first, safety second, and then all your production concerns third. Um, as when you're going to lay out, especially your animal pens and everything. Um, obviously, my rabbit security is still uh, lacking. <laughs> so I, I mean, I've got uh, you know the tiniest perimeter fencing you can get. But then you have to layer that bottom with chicken wire, the whole perimeter, which I don't have, I didn't have enough to go around. So just things like that, like what are your biggest threats? Well, yeah, I've got big fences to hopefully keep coyotes out and dogs, but then the rabbits get in here and get the garden. It's like, <laughs> it's always a, a balancing act and it's always also you have to just put a little uh, time and effort in, on the rabbit patrol and things like that to... Uh, prevent the uh, incursions when you can you know I've done videos on that we've had coyote patrol rabbit patrol uh, the hawks come by in the morning you have to look you know worried you know we've had chickens get snatched up by hawks so do you close your chickens fully in so they don't they have a top cover as well as a bottom cover uh, we didn't uh, well the one pen of chickens does uh, the egg layers but then the uh, meat chickens, they, they're kind of more open, free graze, uh, free range, and uh, they don't have a top cover, so they could get picked off. Same with the turkeys. You know, we lose one here and there, depending on when the hawks want to drop by or, or something, or maybe the owls. Um, so it's hard to say on that. You know, you got to think of those things too. You got threats coming from all directions. It's a, it's a, it's a 3D environment, as they would say on the battlefield. You're fighting a 3D warfare. The rabbits go through, the coyotes go over, the hawks come from above, and then in the garden you got the ground squirrels too. <laughs> so yeah, you could have all kinds of threats. Yeah, you know, if you if you listed those out, you know, it could be the neighbor's dog. Who knows? That you're worried about most. But uh, that security uh, is a uh, a number one. Just like in uh, any patrol, security is paramount. Security is continuous, and. Uh, you go from there <laughs> then you back off all your other actions based on that that's what i would say too so thanks i'll tend to hope everybody got something out of this uh it's been a long in the tooth video but it is a, a good subject there's lots of videos and probably on youtube to talk about it that's just kind of my take on it being a from a new guy starting out to kind of figuring it out as we go that's kind of uh the take on it i would give you uh some as advice if you're just starting off so i guess it's applied to tactical tony as he's moving forward in that direction to uh, look at uh, how he's going to lay out his property. I've given him some diagrams on more homestead layout, um, especially security-wise, because security is paramount. And you, there's ways to lay your property out to help you with your security of the whole homestead uh, between where you place your garden, your septic tank leach field, uh, berms, you know ditches stuff like that for other security concerns if you don't have a full perimeter fencing in particular um, but if you can fully fence your perimeter that's key when you're talking about other predators because it's just that initial barrier that they have to think twice about especially if you have dogs running your dogs know to run that perimeter and it gives them a good boundary and they will uh, what are you doing there buddy they will uh, keep that so security 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 then do everything else so y'all have a good day live free